What up, y'all? This is your boy Ace here, and welcome to Track and Ace. Wow, what a way to close out the championships, bro. Um, this was this was amazing, guys. Like, this was actually really thrilling and really fun to watch. This was a really fun relay. It, it was much more funner than the one the four by one. I don't know what it was with the four by one, man. It just didn't have that steam or that juice like it had last year for the women. The four by one. Uh, it just didn't have that juice, man. This was, I think what helped the 4x4 four four this year was the fact that we didn't have to worry about uh, the U.S. who was going to be favoring. We had Sidney McLaughlin, Brent Wilson, Abby Steiner, and Talitha Diggs all on the same team. So we, we just didn't have to worry about what we usually end up having to worry about, which was, uh, like I said, you know, having to worry about basically uh, – Basically having to worry about them winning and then figuring out who's going to come in second. Like, it seems like most of the races kind of go that way. Just trying to figure out who's going to come in second. So, this year, U.S. Uh, did qualify. So, we had an open field. So, the favorites were actually the Jamaicans. I didn't take a bet in this one. I wish I would have took the Netherlands because it was like a plus 130. I wish I would have took, you know, maybe just put like a few dollars on it. Maybe like three or four dollars on it. But, um... I didn't take it, man, but I always had a feeling that the Netherlands was going to win. I didn't really never feel comfortable with Jamaica being a the favorite. They were the favorite, but I didn't have confidence in them actually holding up. I didn't. I didn't have confidence. Because I said, if Femke Bowl is, is, is running on Team Netherlands, and I knew she would, and he got Leaky Clever on the team, I said, this, this, that's they, they could win it all. They could win it all. And it went just the way I, I thought it would go in the beginning, man. It, did, it just went what just the way I thought it was gonna go. But so let me put the time. So the time should be up on the screen, so y'all can see. What was really interesting about this, guys, was that so the race started out with Jamaicans being the favorites, like it should have been. Candace McLeod did a spectacular job leading off, um, held first place, and got a decent lead. For Genevieve Russell. So Genevieve Russell was next for Jamaica. And she had to go against Leaky Clever. Now at this point. Great Britain. Canada. They were all kind of in that. in a, 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 Like all in that like little middle there. For third place. You know. They were. I think Canada was really. Really threatening. The Canada was really threatening. Zoe Sh uh, Shawar. Had a pretty nice. Pretty nice first uh, leg there. I thought Zoe ran pretty well there in that first leg. Um, and then Stever Steverini, she ended up having to go against Amber Annie for the uh, Great Britain. So that's the matchup. So Leaky Clever was the key in this entire race because Leaky Clever, I believe, if Jamaica. I mean, if, if Leaky Clever did not run that second leg like she did, Jamaica will win. A lot of it had to do with Leaky Clever the way she ran that second leg. She got that lead down that Candace McLeod had opened up with. She got it way down. Way, way down. And Femke Ball, as spectacular as her finish was, it's not possible without Leaky Clever sewing, up, sewing that up. Because in the third leg, things got a little bit dicey again for the Dutch. Peters, I don't feel like Peters had the best run in that leg. Now, she didn't do it bad enough to really lose third or fourth place. But, Nikisha Price had a great run in that third leg. Had a great run. And if you ask me, she should have been the one anchoring. It, it should have been either her or Candace McLeod. But I felt like Nikisha Price is faster. Nikisha Price should have should have anchored for Jamaica. They did it just like they did last year. The, Jamaica sometimes with these relays, especially lately, the way they put the teams together has been very puzzling. I, I think Nikisha Price should have definitely been an anchor. They went with the, the inexperienced Stacey Ann Williams. And I, and that was easy for Femke Bow. But they probably felt like, okay, if we got the lead, let's secure it with, with Nikisha Price. But you got Femke Bow threatening in the last spot. And for Great Britain, you got Ama Pippi and uh, Nicole Yergin to finish it off. So they had a nice finish as well with Pippi and Yergin finishing things off. 
Peters was starting to lose a lot of Clever's lead. And that made it very difficult by the time Phil Cabal got it, it. It made it very difficult for Phil Cabal to really make up that ground. So Stacey Ann Williams had a nice lead. Nikisha Price was definitely going to be their MVP. I'll probably give cult MVPs to her and McLeod if they had one. But um, Nikisha Price had a really nice lead for Stacey Ann Williams today. Stacey Ann Williams had a nice start, but she put too much in the beginning. And this is one of the differences that I saw with Leaky Clever. Leaky Clever in the 400, the reason why she came in six is because she started too fast. Like she, she put her all into the first 200 meters. If she would have did, like she did today, went harder on the last, you know, 100, her time today would have been so good. There's no doubt about it. Her time would have been so good today. It would have been. It just, it would have been. It, it would have been. It, 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 she probably would have finished in fourth. I don't even know. I don't even know. I think she would have been better than fifth. I think I think it was there for Leaky Clever because Leaky Clever wasn't at it was like a few tenths of a second behind fifth place in that four hundred meters. So Leaky Clever would have definitely gotten a fourth, at least fourth, maybe threatened third. You know, she ran like that in this race. Femke Ball. It seemed like her and Femke Ball had the same strategy. You know, they trained together. It seemed like they had the same strategy. That, that's how we're going to run. Because Femke Ball, it was a slow start, just like Leaky Clever. And Femke Ball was really working on making up the ground. But she wasn't going too hard, though. But one thing, I think a lot of people watching the race, if, you, if you're not really f familiar with Femke Ball or believe in her, you're believing in her now. Because the way she slowly closed that lead on Jamaica, because, they, like I said, Stacey Ann Williams went way too hard. She didn't... Uh, I won't say play safe, but if she would have played a little safer, I think this quarter would have went, I think that, you know, her, her leg would have went a lot different. You know, but Femke Ball was behind. Remember, at this point, I think she was behind here again as well. I'm not sure if she was behind Grace Conrad for Canada, but they, but she was down there, though, because, like I said, Peters didn't have that great of a run, and she had a lot of ground to make up. And... She ended up, like I said, it was like watching her in slow motion, bro. Just ended up getting the lead from Stacey Ann Williams and having a little room in between her. And having a little bit of room. So, the Netherlands, man, what a race by them. So entertaining. That, that They said that was the best run in uh, team history for, for the women in the 4x4. And Phil Cabo, Phil Cabo made up for that trip she had in the mixed relays. And that was the thing. I could tell that was probably on her mind. Phil Cabo was really determined not to fail. Because she already felt like, you know, we're not gonna like I'm not gonna have my team coming up empty handed in these whole world championships. Or you know, she tripped. I wouldn't even say she lost the form because that was just a flukish trip. Anybody could trip. We saw a thing more as great as she is. She tripped in the semifinals on Friday. It happens. You, when you're in the pack like that. You're going to trip. But Femke Bowl, I don't know what it was with Femke Bowl, but she just tripped, lost her balance. And she ended up losing that mixed relay. I knew, I had a feeling. I said, as long as they're not out of it, and they were never out of it, I said, they got a chance to push this and win. Because I didn't, like I said, guys, I didn't believe in Jamaica to win. I didn't. I, I, I was like, this is why, I, I think that's what kept me from betting. It was not only losing that big bet with Thing Mo and Keely Hoskinson out winning in the 800. Because I think that definitely kept me from, from going into this one. But they were all, Jamaica being a minus as well, I didn't have that belief in them. So I was like, okay, if I don't bet for Jamaica because they're a minus, I vote for the Net I'll go for the Netherlands and they lose, though, to Jamaica, then, you know, I took a, I took a pretty severe loss, right? You know, I was only going to put like a few few dollars on it, you know. But I, 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 I'm glad I didn't bet at all. I was able to enjoy the race without being stressed out. Uh, but I'm, I'm so happy for Leaky Clever that she leads with gold. I mean, uh, not gold. Yeah, gold medal. A team gold medal. And Phil Bowl as well. You know, she's able to, you know, she took care of her individual event. with the second fastest time ever. And also got gold and got gold for uh, Peters and Salberg. And I don't know. That's the, I think that might be their first major... Gold medal, I think, for Saulberg and Peters. I can't remember if they've ever had 
gold at the World Championships or at the Olympics. I don't, I can't remember in a team event. So, um, amazing stuff there, man. And uh, I, I, like I said, I like it, man. I, I like what they did here. Love what they did here, and hopefully they'll do a little better. And, and for me, but with Stahlberg, I wish she could get a little bit better in the individual 400. You know, because I think what she needs to do, she needs to go ahead and train with Leaky Clever, Phil Cabal, or if they're training, um, you know, uh, separately this year, she needs to go train with them, man, because she has speed. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I feel like she should go train with them, man. Because Stahlberg still has a lot of potential, you know. He's only 25. He still has a lot of potential, man. So, I feel like she should take a look at it, you know. At least take a look at it, you know. Um, but good win for Phil Cabot, Leaky Clever, Stahlberg, and Peters, man. That was an amazing way to close out the World Championships. Very fun. It wasn't as like last year where you just knew the U.S. was going to win. It was pretty dicey. Uh, so, pretty good stuff, man. It Again, congratulations to this team. Because I think they won the silver medal last year um, at World Indoors together. So this group definitely, definitely proven they could get it done together. But I also want to say, I want to say this too, though. I want to say this too, though. I feel like at the same time, I feel like at the same time that maybe if the Dutch had maybe one other real good runner in there, this would have never been in question. And that group could probably threaten the United States because the United States, like I said, they're probably going to have Sydney, Britton Wilson for sure. We'll see if Talitha is added to the team. Uh, maybe they'll go with Nia Aikens. I don't know. Um, and then, and then if Abby Steiner qualifies for the Olympics, maybe she'll be in there too, like she was last year. So I think if they had one more runner, I think I think they could challenge, man, and it, or at least win the silver for sure. Um, at the Olympics, so we'll see what happens, man. But go ahead and give me your thoughts on this, man. This is an amazing way to close out the uh, world champ. World, uh, I mean, not the world indoor champ, but the world championships. We still have some diamond league stops coming up. I'm going to try to cover most of them. Definitely, I'm going to cover the final. I don't know if I'm covering the two next week. I think there's one in, like, Belarus. I might end up covering that one the following weekend. Um, And then, and then we're going to start. And then after the Diamond League final, I'm going to start talking about some off-season stuff, man. Because we got to – it's my first Olympic year. So, I want to start really getting ready for that Olympic year, man. Because uh, it, indoors is right around the corner in January. It's almost January already. It's, it's, it's September. We're not that far away from the winter time, bro. So we're almost there, man. But make sure y'all uh, subscribe to my man Jacob the Analyst. He's done a phenomenal job with his recaps, all doing the World Championships. I've talked to him about that. He's been doing a stellar job. Make sure y'all check his stuff out as well. Um, if you want to donate as well, I got my donation links in the description box. Uh, and if you want to bet on FanDuel, I got my referral link in the description box as well if you want to start betting. Uh, but go on ahead and get this video a like, share, subscribe, y'all. Thank y'all for watching. We'll see y'all at the Olympics next year, man. Track and ace.